What up everybody? Instruct the Beats back again here with another circle lesson today. We're talking about circles as found in real life. Performed by Instruct the Beats. So our objective today, today I will be able to solve real world problems involving the circumference and area of circles. Our rule for this lesson is that when we're talking about pi, we're going to use 3.14 as an approximation. If you click the pi button on your calculator, if you have one, then you're going to get a little bit different answer. So go ahead and just type in 3.14 when using pi. So throughout this lesson, we're going to highlight some key words uh, that you might typically see in real world uh, circle problems. And so go ahead and jot those down in your notes. But our first problem says the circular fountain in my backyard has a radius of 3.14 feet. If I walk around it four times, how many feet did I walk? Okay, so for this problem, right, they gave you the radius of 9.14, and you know that you're walking around this fountain, right? So you make four laps around the fountain. This is one of the favorite real life types of problems because when you're walking around something, you're finding the circumference. So a lot of people would just go ahead and find the circumference, right? So they'd use, you know, circumference equals uh, 2 pi r, right? And when you do that, you plug in 2. 3.14 as pi, and then your radius would be 9.4. And when you solve that, you would get 59.032, right? So that's going to be their circumference of this fountain. But what you don't want is just to find their circumference because you didn't walk, I didn't walk around it once, I walked around it four times. So typically, right, in real life, it's not just, hey, find the circumference, find the area. You have to actually do something with it. So here's my circumference. Now I need to multiply that by four to figure out, hey, if I walked around it four times, how far did I walk? And when you solve that, you're going to see that I walked 236.128 feet. All right. So our first thing that we do in real world problems is we take the circumference or area and then have to do an extra step with it. We have to read carefully. Let's take a look at another type of problem. All right, so here we have a question about a wheel, okay? So with wheels, right, we know that they're circles. A lot of times they'll say rotations. They might also say revolutions, right? That's just when the wheel starts here and turns all the way around once. That's a really bad circle I just drew. So if it's asking you for rotations or revolutions, this is another way to tell you that they are talking about circumference, all right? So when I look at that right here, I'm automatically thinking I probably have to do something with my circumference. Let's go ahead and read the question. So it says the wheel has a radius of 13 and 1 fourth inch, inches, okay? So our radius is 13. I'm going to go ahead and turn that into a decimal just to make it easier to type into my calculator of 0.25. And you don't want to know the circumference, right? You want to know, hey, what's the circumference? And then multiply that by 40 because it rotated all the way around the outside 40 times. So again, we're going to do uh, our circumference is going to equal 2 pi r, okay, because it gave me the radius here. And so I'm going to go ahead and multiply and plug in 3.14. I know my radius was 13.25, which I uh, did the decimal form for this mixed number to make it easier. And when I put that into my calculator, I see that the circumference is going to be 83.21 inches, all right? But again, this is not my final answer because the bike wheel made 40 rotations or 40 revolutions. So how far did that go? And then at the end, we want to round our answer to the nearest tenth. So now I need to take 83.21, right? And I'm going to multiply that by 40 because I did my circumference 40 times. And when you solve that, you see the answer for this question should be 3,300, oops, 28 and four tenths inches, okay? So again, this is another example of a type of problem where they ask you to find the circumference, but you had to do something else with it, and also introducing you to the word rotations and revolutions as another way to ask for circumference. All right, 
So now, again, if you want to pause it, read it, try it yourself, you can do that and push play to check your work. We have a uh, question about this window right here. Okay, so it says Marie's bedroom window is made up of a semicircle, okay, or semicircle. We know that's half a circle and a square. She wants to put a light around the frame of her window. Okay, so when I see around the frame of her window, I'm automatically thinking about perimeter, right? And even though the circle doesn't have a true perimeter, I'm thinking about circumference as well. How many feet of light should she buy to go around the window? And I want to round that to the nearest hundredth. So a lot of times with these types of questions, they'll give you a real world problem like this and you're gonna have to decompose the shape. It said right here that it's made up of a semicircle, which you can kind of see the outline. I'll do that in black and then a square. So this is actually a much simpler problem than we think, but this is a typical question that they're going to ask you for to test your circle knowledge. All right. So what we need to do here is we need to find the circumference of this semicircle and the perimeter of this square. And if you look, it gave you everything you needed to know right here with 2.15. And then we just have to use our brain a little bit, right? Because we're going around the frame. That's just the outside. So I know because this is a square, this is going to be 2.5, uh, this will be 2.5, and this will be 2.5. I don't need this inside part anymore. That was just the information that I needed to fill it out. The frame doesn't go right here. It goes around the outside. So I'm not adding up four sides of 2.5. I'm just adding up one, two, three sides. Now I need to find the circumference of my semicircle. So my diameter, right, was 2.5. So my circumference formula I'm gonna use is just gonna be pi times diameter. And so when I do that, I'm gonna do 3.14. And my diameter was 2.5, right, which it gave me right here before I cross that out. When I solve that, so the circumference of that circle would be 7.85. But again, I don't want a whole circle, I only want a semicircle. So I need to divide that by two. I can multiply by one half, but I get the same thing. And when I do that, the circumference of my semicircle is going to be 3.93 because I rounded it to the hundredths place. So this is the circumference of the top part of my window. Now, if I add these two, uh, three numbers together, right, that should be 7.5, or the perimeter of this bottom part is 7.5. When I add those together, the total amount of lights you should buy to go all the way around the window is 11 and 43 hundredths feet, and that is how many feet of lights she would need. So again, here's another type of real world problem. They're gonna give you a shape. It's gonna be made up of a couple different types of shapes. You have to be able to decompose it and then use your area or your circumference knowledge to help you out. So hopefully you got that one right. If not, it's okay to fail as long as you learn from it. We would love for you to subscribe, comment, uh, like the video. Let us know where you're watching from. Check out all our merchandise at instructthebeats.com. Again, thank you so much. Instruct the Beats, out.